Good morning. I'm Bill Cook from Greenlee County Cooperative Extension over on the east side of the state in Duncan, Arizona. Today we're talking about deciduous shade trees. We're located in USDA Zone 8A. We have a lot of variable weather here. Sometimes we're in Zone 9 and sometimes we're in Zone 6. One of the things I like to look at when I'm buying shade trees is, you know, where it fits in the zone. For example, a tree that does well zones 6 through 10, well, I'm right smack in the middle at zone 8, we're in pretty good shape there. If I were looking at a tree that did well in 5 to 8, we'd be right on the edge of that tree's happy place. And you get a particularly hot summer, trees that are on the edge of their comfort zone suffer. Being in zone 8A, USDA, and sunset zone 10, I like plants where, where that falls right in the middle. One of the most important things to me is that they don't need a whole lot of water. And of course, another important thing is, can I get one at the nursery? So we're gonna talk about trees that are commonly available at almost any nursery that you can get anywhere. So on to our favorites. So right here in front of me is one of my all time favorites. This is Vitex. You see it's getting ready to bloom. The flowers are starting at the bottom. They're really pretty. So this Vitex tree is gonna just be covered with these beautiful purple blossoms, the bees, butterflies, everybody loves them. They're a good shade tree, they grow really fast, but this particular tree will go about 15 feet. It has a lot of flowers, a lot of seeds, and during the winter, you'll see the little finches under here picking up seeds. It's, it's good if you like birds. And the prolific seed situation, they may start coming up in your yard and your flower beds. So that is something to consider. Another thing to think about with these trees, they take kindly to shaping. You can prune them up into multiple trunks, a single trunk, a big bush, which is what we're letting these do. They're real easy to work with and they don't take much water. They come in a couple different colors, a couple different versions, but the standard is Agnes Castus that we're looking at and it's a real dandy. So another one of my favorite shade trees, low water use, is the uh, Chilopsis, also known as desert willow. I guess, in a way, the leaves kind of resemble a willow, something like that, but it is no way, shape, or form a willow. This tree does very well with very little water. About the only drawback I can think to this tree is that it produces viable seeds, which may pop up in your flower pots, in your yard, and that sort of thing. But that's a pretty minor drawback. This tree is blooms all summer long. Uh, bees love it, everything, butterflies. They can get pretty good size. This one's a little bigger than most, usually about 20 feet. They grow fast and nothing really seems to bother them. So another good choice for a shade tree is mesquite. The fact that they grow all over the desert here uh, says a lot about how hardy they are. There are mesquites available in nurseries. You can go to just about any good nursery and pick up a mesquite tree. One thing to be aware of is that there are a lot of different mesquites out there and make sure that the nursery is selling a mesquite that does well in your area, which here would be a honey mesquite or a velvet mesquite. In places with warmer winters, Chilean mesquites do great. They take kindly to pruning, they grow fast if you water them, and they don't take much water or much care. So another one of my favorite deciduous shade trees is locusts. There's all kinds of locusts. There's golden honey locusts, there's sunburst locusts. These trees here are actually well over a hundred years old. They're commonly called black locusts and locusts don't take much water and you can see they get quite large. So one thing to look for when you're locust shopping, some of them have thorns, some of them don't. Some of them have pods, some of them don't. You can see this particular one has pods. So they're a great tree 
They're very strong wood. The one and only drawback I can think of with these, uh, they have a very extensive root system and they can get into your flower beds. If you're looking for a big tree and you have plenty of room, just about any one of the locusts will do you. So this is a Chinese pistache. This is uh, another real dandy of a shade tree. They get quite large and they don't take much water. And one of the biggest, uh, you know, one of the biggest benefits of Chinese pistache, besides the shade, is that in the fall, they turn brilliant red, scarlet. They have the best fall color of just about anything in Arizona. Chinese pistache is a good tree. They're sturdy. They don't tend to break in the wind or anything. They don't take much water. And I've never really known the roots to be invasive. Now, they do cut, there's a male tree and a female tree separately. Sometimes if you have a female tree around, you might have some little sprouts coming up from the viable seed, but that's about it. They grow fast. I will warn you when you plant the standard typical Chinese pistache, when it's a young tree, it'll look pretty rugged. They're asymmetric. They look like that Charlie Brown Christmas tree, oftentimes. But when they grow, they fill out nice into a nice even crown. Uh, they go 25, 30 feet pretty easily. So that's Chinese pistache. So this is a Chitalpa. This is another real dandy. It's actually a cross between Chilopsis or desert willow and Catalpa. And a Catalpa is a fabulous shade tree that doesn't take much water, but I'm not so sure you'll find those in the in the nursery these days. This Catalpa pretty much does this. They can go they can go 20 feet. That would be a big one. They bloom all summer long. The bees love them, you know, pollinators come and all that good stuff. One of the things I like about this hybrid is that it has sterile seeds. So they don't come up in your, in your flower beds and flower pots and things like that. They don't take much water. They grow really fast. The one thing I will say is they do a lot better if they have drainage. Uh, these are growing in a heavy clay soil. They're probably 15 years old. Other Chitalpas that I've planted in places with a good sandy soil or a loam are twice as big. So anyway, this is Chitalpa. This is a mulberry tree. You know, when you're talking shade trees that don't require much water, people don't uh, immediately think of mulberries. But the fact is that they don't need a whole lot of water. A mulberry is happy with 18 inches of precipitation a year. So that's not a whole lot of water. They're great shade. They grow really fast and they're super indestructible. One thing about mulberries, people complain about the mess. Well, if you get the female, you have the fruit, and if you want the fruit, you'll deal with the mess. But you can, you can avoid that by getting a male mulberry. But again, the amount of water that it takes to keep a tree this size and this good dense shade, I think mulberry is a real winner. So here in the honorable mention category of shade trees that require very little water is the jujube. Very low water requirement, grows like a champ here, seems to get along no matter what. Nothing really seems to bother it, makes nice shade, it grows fast, very little water, very little fertilizing, and it makes fruit, which is a bonus. So this is jujube. So this is a short list. This was never intended to be a lengthy or complete list. But as I said in the beginning, these are trees that you can actually purchase at just about any nursery. They're easy to find, easy to care for, don't take a ton of water, and they give you shade reliably.